Hi, I'm Elliot Danker from Power 98, and joining me today is Dr. Tan Sing Huang. She's a senior consultant at the National University Cancer Institute in Singapore. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you for having me. We are talking about breast cancer, and obviously, the first question that will pop up is what are the obvious signs of breast cancer? Well, um, the signs of breast cancer really depend on when you detect it. Okay. And of course, um, therein lies the importance of screening mammograms mm. because. Um, you know, it, it, there may not even be any signs or symptoms of early breast cancer. That's the best time to detect it. However, the most majority of women do come to us with uh, symptoms or signs of breast cancer. And most commonly, this is a breast lump. Okay. Of course, there are other signs as well, such as uh, nipple retraction, which is a nipple that used to be protruding but is now newly inverted. Other changes are like things like um, skin changes okay. over the overlap breast, any redness, dimpling, puckering that wasn't there before, as well as uh, nipple itching, rash, or any thickening of the nipple skin, and also in general any um, signs of uh, change in the shape or size of the breast, which is new, and you should definitely seek the help of the health professional. And the best way actually to get detection obviously is with a mammogram. But That's correct. Could I check how often should you get a mammogram done? Well, a um, mammogram should be done once every uh, two years for women who are aged 50 and above. And for women aged 40 to 49, you should really discuss beforehand with your doctor. And if you do decide to go ahead with it, then it's done once every year. Okay. And uh, there. I do have to emphasize that about 40% of our Sinkran population present with breast cancer in age less than 50. So indeed, we do see a relatively high incidence in this age group. So it's definitely a test worthwhile considering. Okay. Do you think you could share with us some very simple ways uh, for women to check for lumps in their breasts? Sure. Um, I think breast self-examination should be encouraged mainly to get a feel of what is normal and what is not. Okay. And uh, it should be started from the age of 30 and done once a month. Okay. Um, usually, if you are s still menstruating, probably 7 to 10 days post your period when your breasts are less tender. If you're postmenopausal, then just pick a day, say the first day of every month. And what you should do is actually, firstly, stand in front of the mirror with your arms by your side, and then raise above your head, and then clasp firmly on your hips and basically what you're trying to do is to contract your chest muscles and you're actually looking for um, any asymmetry or any changes over the skin or changes in the nipple of the breast and secondly the second part of the breast self-examination should probably be done lying down and you should place a pillow or a towel below the side of the shoulder of which you're going to examine your breast and use the flats of your three fingers and feel Basically what you're doing is you're trying to feel for any breast lumps. You should try to cover the entire breast, not forgetting the area between the breast and the armpit, as well as the armpit area, because that is where the uh, lymph nodes can be enlarged, which is a site of the spread of the breast cancer. And you should try and palpate for lumps using, using a circular motion from outwards inwards towards the nipple. And there are other ways you can do it, such as, for example, the wheels on the spoke, so inwards out and then outwards in again, taking care to cover the entire breast. And the third way is perhaps in a grid like way, using vertical lines, so okay. um, just from the inwards to the outwards uh, position. Okay. I like the story uh, how Angelina Joby uh, decided to actually remove her breasts. Um, but that brought up a question in my head. Is it actually possible for women to inherit breast cancer? Sure. I think uh, this Angelina Jolie phenomenon, yeah. as you have mentioned, uh, really has uh, caught the interest of the entire world. Mm -hmm. And I think this issue of the inheritance of breast cancer, we know that the majority of breast cancers are not inherited. So less than 10% of breast cancers are inherited. And this, um, that this issue of which you're referring to is uh, basically Angelina Jolie had a BRCA mutation. Okay. So um, this is an uncommon mutation and um, basically in an unselected group of women with breast cancer, this mutation could occur in about 1-3%. to 3 uh, okay. But um, 
there are certain features that would make you decide if you have breast cancer to go for gene testing. And these features would be, for example, a young onset breast cancer, or if you have breast cancer with a close male relative with breast cancer, or if you have many close relatives, especially who have had breast cancer at a younger age group, or in particular, if you have uh, or very, or close relatives with ovarian cancer as well. So um, BRCA, the, the, the significance of the BRCA gene mutation um, is that it actually causes you to have a much higher risk of breast cancer okay. and uh, also ovarian cancer. Okay. Um, this popped up on my Facebook news feed the other day and I couldn't help it. Since I'm talking to you, I have to ask you this. Uh, can wearing a bra all the time actually cause breast cancer? Because a friend of mine was talking about it. Well, I've received this um, on the email as okay. well, as well as uh, on the internet. Okay. And um, I've seen at least one book written about it. Oh, wow. Um, entitled Dress to Kill. And basically, uh, I think the rationale of this uh, whole issue is that bras, especially those which are underwired, could actually block the lymphatic flow. And by doing so, there's actually an accumulation of toxins in the breast. Okay. And this causes uh, abnormal development of uh, cells in the breast and hence breast cancer. But there is absolutely no scientific or clinical uh, basis for this. And so, rest assured, wearing a bra is not going to kill you, no matter how long you wear it for. Okay. Um, and uh, this is uh, purely a myth. <laughs> okay, one more question since I've got your attention. Um, and this is something I got curious, decided to go online and search it up. But I need to know for sure, can a man get breast cancer? Um, well, I suppose you're interested in that. <laughs> you are a man too. And um, basically, people don't know this, but men do have breast tissue as well. The thing is, um, the breast tissue in men are not that well developed as females because they have the lower levels of female hormones. Um, the lifetime risk of a male getting breast cancer is really very low. Okay. Um, and in fact, it is 100 times more common for a woman to get breast cancer than a man. Um, however, males, the difference between male and female breast cancers are that males tend to present at a later age, in their mid to late 60s, and um, they also unfortunately tend to present at a more advanced stage. It is not because their cancer is more aggressive, but it's because I think men are just less aware that they could get cancer, and so they may not seek medical attention until later. Secondly, because as I mentioned, there's less tissue, so the tumour really has much less space to actually spread before it starts to involve the surrounding tissue. And hence, it may present at a more advanced stage. Okay, but uh, so the key really is down to the female hormone that's present. Um, well, there are certain risk factors okay. for male breast cancers, and one of them is genetic factors. Right, okay. And this pertains to what we have just discussed actually, because um, the BRCA2 gene is once again, it could be a color. Okay. In this case, it's the BRCA2 gene, which may give a man a greater lifetime risk of, a much greater lifetime risk of uh, getting male breast cancers. If he has many close relatives uh, with cancer as well, breast cancer, and he may have a higher risk as well. There are certain other risk factors like um, a relative increase of estrogens as opposed to androgens, okay. androgens which is the male um, hormone, um, which could predispose one to get um, male breast cancer as well. And these conditions include things like uh, liver dysfunction, obesity, and uh, even um, well alcohol intake, which could also cause liver dysfunction and could lead to this as well. Thank you so much for your time, Doctor. And make sure you keep it right here on this channel as we continue to talk about more health issues uh, together with Young Lin School of Medicine. Love life, love music. Power 98.